Hi, welcome to the part 10 of this video series. We are looking at AWS Certified Developer Associate Real Certification Questions. This is the part 10. There are previous parts. Please do not forget to refer parts 1 to 9 of this playlist. In this part, we will cover questions linked with these topics. Please hit the subscribe and the like button. Also, ensure to drop in your comments if you think you are preparing for some other cloud certification and you want me to prepare content around those. Let's jump straight into the questions here. So the story goes, it's simple. You know, you, yeah, as a developer, you are trying to monitor an application and you have a small job for it. Okay, so this is your application. You have written a small job. This small job is a cron job and it returns one if the service is up or returns zero. That means if this application is up, uh, you will get, one else zero. So what you need to do is this developer is trying to put in custom metrics. Okay. So you remember there are two types of metrics. So if you see this section, there are a list of metrics you can ca uh, capture in CloudWatch. This is the standard. These are list of standard metrics. Now th there are so many of them. Now there's another thing called custom metrics. So why you use custom metrics if the standard metric is not available for your requirement then you can create your own metrics and put them in and that's the reason this guy is putting the metric but he is using a wrong command he's using put metric alarm function they should use the put metric data command this will help them put their custom metrics in cloudwatch so you can create your custom metrics and you can publish the metrics data points to cloudwatch and there was another question in the previous uh, part where we were checking what is the limit of this put metric. The limit of put metric is 20 different metrics in one request. And the, and the size is limited to 40 KB. So this should be our answer. Now, option A says that if you send custom metrics using CLI, this is not supported, which is not correct. This is wrong. You can use a CLI, you can use console and so on. You can use AWS SDK APIs and so on. Now C says that you should use unified CloudWatch agent to publish custom metrics. Not necessary. You can create your metrics and uh, publish that a uh, custom metrics. Usually what happens is you have CloudWatch agents installed on EC2 instances and those agents keep sending the data for the metrics. But if you want CloudWatch to add a new metric, then CloudWatch agent will not help you. You have to first put that metric using a put metric data command. Once you put this metric, then your agent starts capturing that metrics and send it to CloudWatch. So I hope you understood the difference and hence we are striking this out. D says the code is not running on an EC2 instance. You do not need to provision an EC2 instance and install CloudWatch. CloudWatch is a managed service it will observe your aws resources and applications both aws and on premises keep this in mind thumb rule thumb rule this service works on aws as well as on premises this would be the final answer let's jump into this question see this all is crap what is important is you have to create and delete branches and you want to do it using the least privilege concept that means if you want to create and delete branches, you can only do these two functionalities. You cannot do other functions. If you want to create and delete branches, I will use this one. Create branch, code commit, delete branch. This is my answer. Remaining is striked out. See, put will, uh, it will add or update a file in a branch in AWS code commit. It will not create or delete branches. So put is wrong. Update will update the branch and last one looks totally wrong to me i don't know what is it so this would be my final answer so you can use this one delete branch for deleting a branch in code commit or create branch commands to create a branch in code commit let's lock this answer and move forward so basically there is an api gateway and then there is lambda and you want to send this uh, and you want to transform the query string so that when you're sending from here to there, Lambda should be able to identify it. Simple. There are four options here. Which one is correct? Enable request validation. 
See, before you are trying to integrate the request, no, you should have to validate, perform basic validation. And that is what enable request validation will do. So when you are sending the request from here to there, is the request okay? That you have to first validate. That is what request validation is used for. It will not transform. It will not transform your query stream. This is wrong. And the next one saying is you include the ARN of the Lambda function. See, ARN helps you to uniquely identify your AWS resource. So if you have an S3 bucket, you have AWS RDS databases. If you want to uniquely identify them, each one of them will have its unique ARN. Common sense, guys. Will it convert the string parameters? Will it transform it? No, it will not. Change the integration type. See, there are different integration types which are available depending upon how you want to pass the data to and from the integration point. Like for Lambda function, you can have Lambda proxy integration or Lambda custom integration. For HTTP endpoints, you can have HTTP proxy integration or HTTP custom integration. So these, if you see these, these are the summarized list of integration types. AWS, AWS proxy, HTTP, HTTP proxy and mock. In layman's term, it just identifies how will you send the data from here to here, okay? It will not transform it. So we are only left with create mapping templates. So using the mapping templates, you can do the transformation of your data points when you are sending it. So when you are writing a mapping template, that is a script that is expressed in velocity template language, VTL language is used and is applied to the payload using JSON path expressions. So mapping is also helped. This template mapping template will translate the data from the backend format. This is what is written in the documentation as well. So we have a supporting document also. Hence, this is my final answer. See, I will not go into the questions in depth. It is simple. This line itself makes it clear. You want see you are developing applications and every time you are releasing new versions. What you want to do is you want to do a new version release only only to a restricted number of consumers and you want to do it through API gateway. See, I will introduce you to this one canary release deployments. What it is useful is when it is deployed for testing purposes only. The base version continues to be running on production as normal operations and you are only releasing a portion of or whatever the code is just to a portion of the people for testing. This is called canary release deployment. We already have an option here for canary release deployment. This is my answer. But let's look at other options. A says you create a new API in Gateway, direct the portion of the traffic to the new API. This will not work because it is not addressing how will you, you know, release the code. This is not about releasing the code. It is managing the traffic. So A is wrong. B says validate the new API version and promote it to production during the window of lowest expected utilization. This will not work boss. You will be messing up production. You already have a properly working production environment. You want to beta test. When you talk about canary canary, what it is doing is it is doing a beta test. Whenever Microsoft launches some updates, it does some beta test. iOS it launches some updates, it does some beta test. So it will re release it. So to some small portion of the users, they do the beta test and hence they cannot wipe the production just because they think, oh, in peak time, 1 million users are accessing it and in off peak, only 10,000 users are accessing it. Let's put it in the production when it, the, it is lowest expected utilization so that 10,000 users will log complain and say if there is a defect in the new version, they will log 10,000 complaints, okay? And you are okay to accept those uh, customer rebukes. That is not okay. That's why we will strike this out. C says implement a CloudWatch alarm to trigger a rollback status code and this is crap. This is crap. And we demo create an alarm for code deployments. Alarm is used for application monitoring. And so this is my final answer. Please hit the subscribe and the like button. It takes a lot of effort to put these contents. This brings us to the end of part 10. Let us summarize what we covered in this part. We covered questions linked with these topics. This was one. This is the next one. And this is the last one. This brings us to the end of this part. See you in the next part.